So this is part two of the video series. And we're gonna take a little bit of a behind the scenes look at what's going on with the Strapi implementation. So here I have a local Postgres database installed. For security reasons, I won't be showing the names of the databases and so forth, but I do have Postgres installed here. And so what I did is I restored a copy of the working production database down here on a local development machine using some Heroku CLI commands. And so I got the production database running here. And I also wanted to mention this unlayer embedded plugin. That's what the Strapi email designer is using. So you may want to go to this website unlayer.com unlayer.com slash embed and you can learn a lot more about it it's a very excellent and like they said here developer friendly tool to help you customize your application to be able to support building and sending HTML emails so definitely check out that site then I wanted to briefly show this form again and the, the HTML form that is in it. And so the code for that is here on the left side of the screen and also in this forms.js, there's some basic code here and it's using jQuery. The most important thing is to see the URL here that it's pointed at my Strapi API and an endpoint called HTML email like you see here on line 51 and so that is what is going to basically take the information from this web page the username and the email address and it's going to send it along to the Strapi API and that's what you see here so it's gathering the username and the email address and submitting it and then if it gets an OK response back basically I just redirect to a thank you page on this local machine and another thing I wanted to mention was this REST client. If we look at our file extensions, I have Live Server installed and the REST client. So this is one that's been installed by 2.7 million people and allows you to send HTTP requests and view the response in VS Code directly. It's a very, very useful tool to have installed. And so this shows a git request to my Strapi API backend that is also running on this machine and so you just format it in the way that you need to to call your API so in this case I'm passing in an email address and a name and so this is a quick way before you write any code or if you don't have a front end running yet to just test your API and then you click this little send request button so I found this rest client to be very helpful when you're building applications and so the HTML page that I just showed actually references this form.js and down here it's just doing some basic form processing and validation and so forth but on line 51 as I mentioned it will do a get request to slash API slash HTML and so we can look this is the web page that will submit it and once it gets back a response it goes to a thank you page and so this is what's going to respond to the form request of sending an email to the Strapi API and so basically we're gathering together the query parameters that the user supplied although it, if you weren't using a form like this you could just use data coming from the Strapi database like if you had a list of users of members of anyone really that you needed to send an email template to you could just feed that data in here and so uh, line 15 here it's getting the Strapi plugin email designer and email service set up 
so that it can go ahead and send the email through my SendGrid account. And so you can see you would have to set this up for your own service. And the email address on line 17 is the email address that we gathered from the user. So from this form and the from and reply to have to be set up properly to work with your SendGrid or whoever your backend email provider is. And then this, I just mentioned, this is the reference ID that we looked at in the first video in the template designer. And so in this particular case for this test, we're going to just automatically select the template ID one, which is the only one I have in this test system. And then we go ahead and set up the subject for the email and we gather the user's data and we're actually going to use that in the template which I showed in the other video like the template strings so you can customize your email by passing in this information so that's basically it for showing how the front-end form is communicating with the strappy API backend and I suppose I could show the route here. So it's dot or get method, the path is HTML email, and the handler is HTML email send mail. And that's what we were just looking at. The handler was in here called send email. So once you have all this set up, you, you would be able to accept input from users like the form input and be able to send the nice formatted HTML templates to that user or to a list of users if you wrote the code in such a manner. So here I've pulled up the Strapi admin panel that you can see here in the URL and I've gone into my settings permissions for the roles of public which you can see up here at the top so if we go back a screen and we go into public and we scroll down and look for our controller it's called HTML email and you have to make sure to select in my case I called it send email and then click save if you don't do that you'll get a error message because you won't be able to connect to it so you need to re remember to do that in this situation and of course this was the email designer that I was talking about in the other videos so I'll just show it real briefly here this is what it's building and sending out through the process that I just showed you and here are the template strings of the data that we're passing in so we can customize the HTML email that's going out of this system And when I mentioned the ID one in the code, that's the same reference ID here. That's how it knows which one of these to use. So I hope you found something useful in this video where we took a look at the locally running Postgres database, this locally running Strapi API instance and the admin panel for Strapi that we looked at and how to set up your email designer and templates and how to bring in your data from the user who submitted the form here. So I appreciate your time and watching the video and we will talk a little bit later. If you like this channel, please like and subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified when I post new content.